Okay, so our arrays activity then. Let's start off with that one. This is reasonably straightforward. Uh, we've got a cinema who's using a, a 2D array to store the film schedule for a classic sci-fi event. So we've got some brilliant films up there. Flash Gordon, Wrath of Khan, and Blade Runner. Question one, explain using examples how you would change the starting time of the film Flash Gordon uh, to 1930. Well, it's a 2D array, so we would need to reference it by the name of the variable. They've not given it, so I'm going to call it array. Uh, then it's our row, which is row zero. And then it's uh, index two for our column, which is where the time is. I'm going to change it to 1930. Notice I've put that in quotes to illustrate that's a string. There is a time data type but you're not required really to know much about that for the A-level specification. Part two there, describe how they could extend this data structure to store the schedule for the week. Well, I think reasonably straightforwardly, you'd want to convert it from a 2D array into a 3D array. So each element then of the 3D array is a 2D array that contains that particular day. On the 4th of May, there's going to be a nine film Star Wars marathon. Explain why the data structure would not be able to represent that schedule. Well. You must think about the limitations of an array then, and an actual array, not necessarily an array that you may have used in your programming. Because modern programming languages, particularly Python, don't really have arrays. They have things called lists or more dynamic data structures. But a true array is limited in that it's a fixed size. This is a fixed size of three rows, so it can't be changed. We can't store nine films in those three rows, unfortunately. Question four, what data type would be needed to store all of the example data in this table? We must remember that arrays technically should only contain one type of data. And in order to get all that data in, there's only one data type that will do it, and that's a string. Stacks activity. A computer system has implemented a stack to store instructions required for a GPU in order to play video games. So this tests your knowledge of hardware as well. GPU is the graphics processing unit. It is your graphics card. Most of you gamers out there know how important that is. Question one, demonstrate how to add render frame to the stack. What we'd need to do is bring in render frame five and it would pop in to the top of the stack, adjusting the pointers from there. Question two, the GPU is able to execute two frame renders, demonstrate how to remove or pop two instructions. So if the GPU was able to do two frame renders this time around, it would pop off the first item, it would come off the top of the stack, and pop off the second item, which would also come off the top of the stack, leaving us with three items in the stack. That would move the pointers in both cases if we had to explain those. Question three, explain the problem this data structure would have in working with the GPU for this purpose. Well, it's reasonably straightforward. This one, problem with the stack is that it's last in, first out. So new frames would be processed before the older frames. So it could be the case that if execution takes too long, the first requests will never be processed. So this would give me a very choppy, jagged way of rendering frames. Queues then are the better way of doing this. And this is reflected in the question. We've changed the previous system to use a queue to store the instructions of the GPU. Question one, demonstrate how to add render frame four to the queue is again reasonably straightforward. It comes in and it drops in at the back, adjusting the back pointer as it does so. The GPU is able to execute two frame renders as it did in the last question, demonstrate how to remove or pop two instructions. Remember the point of a queue is it comes out of the front. So we take one, the pointer moves, we take another, the pointer moves. Our queue is now two items. Question three, explain the advantage that this data structure would have in working with the GPU for this purpose. Well, compared to the previous example, a queue is a first in, first out data structure, meaning that new frames will be queued and executed after the earlier frames. This, this will render the frames in order, meaning the game will be nice and smooth. Linked lists, the activities here tend to be broadly similar and are often what makes up the exam question. The exam questions tend to be mainly linked list or binary tree activities because they're a bit more involved and then you can get a few more marks out of them as a result. So here's the question. A linked list is used to store the names of the executives of a multinational technology company. Start with question one. Assuming that the list starts with Mr. Morgan, write out the list of executives in the correct order. So if we look at Mr. Morgan and we pop him down first, what we're going to do then is follow the pointer to index one, which is Mrs. Vines. Follow the pointer from Mrs. Vines to index three, which is Mrs. Lewis. Follow the pointer there to index two, which is Mr. Gardner. And then there's a null pointer there, meaning it stops. 
Part two, the company employs Mr. Scone in an executive position. Assuming he is added to the end of the list, demonstrate how the linked list would be changed to accommodate this. So what would happen is, remember the linked list behind the scenes is an array. Uh, so we add that to the bottom as index four, and we've got Mr. Scone then. As he's been added to the end of the list and he comes after Mr. Gardner, we'd update the pointer in Mr. Gardner to point to Mr. Scone, so that would become four. And then as Mr. Scone is now the end of the list, we would update his pointer to become null. Question three, Mrs. Vines has left the organization to lead a new business. Demonstrate how you'd remove her from the table. What you do here is very, very simple. You just take the pointer that originally pointed to Mrs. Vines, so from Mr. Morgan, and you replace that to point to whichever pointer is in Mrs. Vines. So we take that pointer from Mrs. Vines, which is three, and pop it as the pointer for Mr. Morgan. This removes Mrs. Vines completely from the data structure. Finally, the trees activity. Draw the binary tree given by the following data set. So we start off with interpreted, that's gonna be our root node. Now native is alphabetically greater, so to the right hand side, so that goes down there. Machine is greater than interpreted, but less than native, so it goes to the left of native. Compiled is less than interpreted, so it goes to the left there. Translated is greater than interpreted and greater than translated, so it goes to the right there. And remember, what I'm referring to here is alphabetical order. And then finally, assembled is less than interpreted and less than compiled, so it goes directly to the left under there. There's our binary tree. Question two demonstrate how the data developer could be added. Well, developer would be checked at the root node. It's less than interpreted because it's earlier in the alphabet. We get to compiled, it's greater than compiled. So there's an empty branch there. So we just insert it at that point. So we've got a nice balanced binary tree now for us going into the next activity. Write the order of the data set obtained by in order traversal. So we start here with assembled, then compiled, then developer, then interpreted, then machine, then native, then translated. Question four, demonstrate how the node translated could be removed. Well, translated luckily is a branch node with no further branches, so it can just be completely removed. How about compiled then? Well, compiled is a little bit different because it has two branches. So we remove it, then we identify the smallest value out of what's remaining, and we move that up to replace it.